going live. We're going live. Doing a little bit of talking. And we're going live. Going live. Uh, I was going to stop it before the sound. The, okay, hold on. Intro time! live and we're live oh i'm james coming at you we're gonna do the welcome to om james can't forget that i am om james and today today is thursday we're doing a thursday thing and i put in the title of this video i'm gonna do a throwback thursday kind of a thing i think hey look at that kevin's here kevin's first you guys are gonna see him in that chat there and just a second, but um, no, it's it's good to see you guys. I'm glad you guys are here. Whoever's here, whoever's not here right now, but will be here tomorrow. That's cool too, and I appreciate that every single time. And uh, Thursday, so I'm thinking about doing like a throwback Thursday kind of a thing. My music, I forget every time. Let's just start it over. There we go. A little bit of that groove going on. Let me guys, let me know you guys if it is like a little too loud, if the music's too loud, or if my vocals are too loud, or if I'm skipping. Just let me know how things are going. Look at that, and Holly's here too. BNW Spinster Life. I'm thinking because of that title, you once had a YouTube channel thing you were working on. I don't know. I couldn't say for sure. That's kind of the vibe I get. But anyway, today, Thursday, Throwback Thursday. I'm thinking Thursdays whenever I stream because I'm going to try to pick like one, maybe two, but probably one day a week where I don't stream games. I instead just I talk about something. And I think Thursdays, and it's like an age-old concept. That, um, I think they call it TBT. It's the Throwback Thursday. It's like a hashtag thing. Um, so I'm going to kind of take part in some of that, you know, like standard ritualistic kind of tradition of, of doing the Throwback Thursday thing. But um, today, what we're going to talk about, if you saw the thumbnail, which you might have, you may not have, if you clicked on it and got to the video, you probably did, is today we are talking about some VHS, not really VH, and the RVHS. We're talking about some movies. They're very near and dear to my heart. And uh, specifically, I am showing you guys the VHS version. And I'm going to talk a little bit tonight. R2, <laughs> I'm ready for the Red Dead Redemption 2 as well, Kevin. I, I actually had to look up a tutorial on how to run the uh, Elgato because I was like, well, you got the HDMI in, you got the HDMI out. I was like, does that mean I have to have an HDMI in on my computer? Because if that's the case, then why do I have an Elgato? I can just plug my PS4 into my computer. It's because it's the USB. The whole thing confused me. So I figured it out and uh, that was just me doing it, not even practically, not doing it physically, but just kind of looking at all the video and details about it. So I, I have everything I need. <coughs> I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll do like a surprise. Hey, Josh is here. Josh is here. What's up, Josh? Good to see, not see you. I'm glad you're seeing me and hearing me. So happy for that. Um, but I'm thinking I might even do like a weekend surprise, kind of a let's get this Elgato thing going, you know? Maybe even set aside like an hour or so just to really like do the whole process with you guys. I don't know, something like that would be a lot of fun, but not just, you know, I'll find some way to incorporate that Elgato. It's so important to me. And once I do, there's going to be a whole universe of games I can plug in my retro pie and even show you guys that. I got a couple of them now. Remember I showed you guys? I got my favorite retro pie zero right here this thing is just a tiny little piece of nothing and yet it plays like thousands of some of my favorite games i don't have thousands of favorite games but you know some of my favorite games are among those thousands and then i also got this other retro pie here raspberry pi it doesn't have the uh memory card and i think i got to plug in like a full-size usb thing to it but it also has like the full-size hdmi it's kick booty kick booty not much more powerful than the other one that uh, raspberry pi zero but it does have a lot more options so thinking about that but anyway i got other things i can even plug into that elgato so that'd be a lot of fun but anyway you guys look at you distracting me look at you distracting me instead right now we're gonna talk about what i wanted to talk about if you guys don't mind i mean if you got some questions or something that's cool too but we're gonna be talking about some of my favorite movies and these are all older movies and i do specifically have my vhs i have a feeling i'm gonna start peppering a bit of vhs trivia in there for you guys vhs is by far my favorite favorite video format a favorite medium for watching video and there are a lot of reasons why other mediums are much better blu-ray and dvds and streaming and all that too they all have their advantages but i'll make some points tonight that'll explain why vhs is probably my very favorite video format so kevin joe versus the volcano oh holly that's what i gotta get on vhs actually i've been working on a small vhs collection and that's a good one i love that movie Oh my goodness. Even like the cream on top of the coffee and it's just the powder and it doesn't dissolve. I love the whole thing. And him and Meg, Meg Ryan when she was so gorgeous and young. My goodness. I'm always on the lookout for cheat games to buy to send your way. Is there anything you can think of? Let me know and I can look out for it. Kevin, you are a rock star, man. I so appreciate that. You're incredible, dude. I really, and actually, one thing I really do want to do, you're not going to be around for it. That'd be cool if it was something we did together. But I, there's a, um, 
old retro gaming store over in Seattle. It's actually based almost like brick by brick on a old retro gaming store over in Japan. I think it's called Pink Hippo, I believe. Um, it's over in Seattle, though, and it's one that, like, Metal Jesus rocks. He goes to that store, like, his buddy is the owner of that store. And even, like, uh, the um, Stop Skeletons from Fighting, they're also from Seattle. Uh, I think that Lazy Game Reviews, LGR, I'm pretty sure that, that he's also from Seattle. So, anyway, I think it'd be kind of cool to go over there and check out Seattle and, and look at some of the retro gaming stuff um, and kind of cover that, you know, a little bit. So, maybe look at some old games I want to get to. And since you did send that composite adapter in with the Elgato, I know that I could plug in just about anything, even classic console stuff to it. So, at some point, I promise you the Elgato is going to happen. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, genders of all ages, we are going to be showing some of my favorite movies now. Let's start with, I, I have no particular order really. If I did, we'd be here all night. But I'm gonna try to find, out of this little stack, I got five movies. You actually know, technically I got four movies in a sequel. The sequel is because they come in a pair. One day when I can get out that way, we can go. Man, Kevin, you know how kick booty that'd be? That'd be so much fun. Just hang out for like a weekend, that'd be so cool. But anyway, okay, let's start with, you know what, let's see. Um, let me, you know what, I think I might do, let's do four, to one so we're gonna start with the one that's not my number one it's probably you know I think I just got my order just now here we go okay number one on the list not number one I just said number four this is the bottom of the list so it's not like my least favorite movie it's probably my least favorite out of the stack but I love this movie and that's the net I don't know if you guys have ever seen the net. Is that green? No, it is red. So you got a red logo there. I thought maybe it was see-through for a second, but it's not. Um, but the net, it's got Sandra Bullock back when she was, I don't know, probably 25 or something, really young. But this movie, friggin' brilliant. It showed a lot of different things that we take for granted now. Stupid little things like ordering pizza online. When I first saw that aspect of that movie, and a lot of other things about that too. Things she did online, controlling different aspects of this and that online. Like just showing what the web could be ultimately and eventually and what it is now. Like I just love the movie. I'm glad you like that, Kevin. Um, specifically also, every VHS tape I have, you probably can't tell so well, but that quality is on point. I try to get really good, crisp, clean qualities. I like when I first put that VHS tape in and it looks brand skanking new. Like, it looks crystal clear, almost like DVD. I love that a lot, because as you guys probably know, VHS tapes are a physical representation of the movie. It's not a bunch of ones and zeros on a little DVD stick or a, a stick, a DVD disc. I think I did it back, or a Blu-ray or something like that. It's not little ones and zeros, and it's not something you're renting. It's not something you're streaming, that if you don't have the internet, you can't watch it. You physically own this movie if you have it on VHS. Like, it's mine. I could literally be sitting on the beach with a Mai Tai, holding it up to the sun, and I could flip through the frames of the movie. Like, I own this movie. You can't take it away from me. Now, it's true, I am still bound by a VCR. You still have to have a VCR to play the dang things, but I own this movie. It's mine. You can't take it away unless you physically take the movie away from me. You can't deny me access, no matter how hard you try. And I like that a lot about VHS. Sorry, Miss Joe. Brady, you didn't miss nothing. You're here. I'm glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Better late than never, right? That's awesome. So anyway, that movie influenced me a lot. I got to kind of see that between that and Hackers, which came out right around the same time. You kind of get a glimpse as to what this information superhighway is. It was called at the time. It's not called that, hasn't been called that for a long time. But that whole concept of being able to interconnect all the people in the world and, and all that kind of stuff. It was like a brand new concept when these movies came out. And they tried to kind of push what was possible. What could possibly happen with that? I think this movie came out right around the same time as Speed. I don't see a date. There it is. 1995. So, um, and by the way, this have a little bit of a, the, the corners aren't great. I don't know if you guys can tell. See that you can probably tell right above her eye right there. Corners aren't great, but ultimately it's the tape itself that's in excellent condition. I'm very happy about that. And that is my first movie on the list. Love that movie. Influential movie. A movie that has still stuck with me to this day. To the point that I'm talking about on my YouTube channel tonight. So that is one of my favorite movies of all time. Love that movie a lot. <clears throat> Another one, also in great condition. I just realized it's a family favorite edition. I wish I had the original release of it. Hair down. You know what? You're right. I'm going to do the hair down real quick. Good call. Good call. Brand skanking. I, that's a ska term. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar. I know Brittany is for sure. I bet Holly probably is. You know what, Kevin? You probably are too. Ska music back in the day. I was... A tremendous fan of Ska, and I lived in this little tiny podunk town in Missouri, and uh, nobody knew who Ska was in Missouri, but I was all about it. And skanking, skanking was the name of the dance you would do to Ska. It had this whole different thing to it, it's exhausting. To this, If I try to do it these days, it's like, it, it wears me the F out. Like, it is really tough to do, but it's fun stuff, and it was called skanking, that's why I said brand skanking. Anyway, long story short, moving on to the next thing on my list, and that's going to be a movie that I hope you guys know, I hope you guys love it like I do. It is the Explorers. Explorers. And there's some green on that one, some bluish that's kind of seeing through. If I tilt it, you can't see it. Watch this. 
And there's the see-through, not the see-through. Explorers. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. One of the very few movies with uh, with uh, River Phoenix before he died. He died at a like a nightclub with Johnny Depp was present and stuff like that. Like back in the shoot, I can't remember what year he died. If anybody knows, feel free to spat it out real quick in the chat. But um, I know he died a while back, and he was a lot older than this. He was like 23 or something, like 27, maybe I want to say. Um, but here he was younger, much younger. I think he's like 13 or something like that there. And it's him and a couple other boys. The other boy too, Ethan Hawke is also in this as a little, as like a little teen. I would say early teen, maybe preteen, but I think he's early teen. <clears throat> and they all like, they get these messages from some like outside source and they end up building a little spaceship. That's it right there. That takes them out to space. They end up going through a wormhole and stuff. They meet Alien. They're played by uh, um, Robert, not Robert Patrick. No. Oh my goodness. The Doctor from Voyager. Doctor from Voyager. How am I not remembering his name? Isn't it Robert something? Picardo. Robert Picardo. That's his name. He plays as the voice and the body of the alien. Anyway, great movie. Great movie. Love this movie a lot. One of my very favorites. I'm going to set it over here now. <clears throat> very much love that movie. If you guys have not yet seen it, if you come across, I'm not sure what kind of streaming services it's on. But this one here, I own. This is mine. I could play this on my own if I want to. And you can't take it away from me. Love that about it. All right. Let's move on to the next one on the list, huh? Next one is a movie that my family hates because I insist on watching this movie uh, every chance I get. If you ask me what I want to watch, I usually say this movie. If it's not this one, it's my number one pick, which is coming after this one. But this is Crocodile to the Dundee. And this is a green crocodile. I know it does. That's why it's kind of see-through right there. Um, <clears throat> but Crocodile Dundee, when this movie first came out, it was 1986 is when this came out. And by the way, this is one of my copies that is pristine. You can't tell probably because of the see-through and all that. But there's like no, the corners are good. There's a tiny little fold right about there. Barely even see it. The VHS itself is in beautiful pristine condition. My goodness, this is in great condition. Like it looks like you're watching a DVD when you watch it. It's barely even been played. Man, I love that movie. Anyway, this is another one of those ones where the second movie was also very good. I like it a lot. It's a very big fan of the second movie. They kind of go hand in hand. A lot like my very number one pick, which I haven't mentioned yet. But um, <clears throat> no, the Crocodile Dundee 1 and 2. I even watched Los Angeles. Um, I was kind of stoked on that whole big prank that the Australian Tourism Board put out where they pretended like there was going to be a reboot with uh, what's his name from like Hangover and all that. <clears throat> but no. Crocodile Dundee, big huge fan of it. Fish out of water story. You got to see a whole aspect of a culture that really America wasn't that aware of. And even to this day, we're not, not that aware of it. And really, Crocodile Dundee was not great. One of your favorites, I'm glad. Um, that it, it still was not like a direct representation. You might even go as far as to say it's a bit stereotypical of Australians, but really there was just so many aspects of that movie and the fact that it was so Paul Hogan, the guy who plays this Crocodile Dundee, he had such a big part in the um, Directing of the movie, like kind of the direction the movie took. What's this music? I don't know, it's Bass Rebels. Invisible Cup. Shout out to Bass Rebels. Love those guys a lot. It's got some bra some like some brass in there. I dig that. But anyway. Just a movie, Fish Out of Water, the guy's got all, I mean, oh, that's what I was saying, is that Paul Hogan was such a big part of the actual filmmaking process, and really, most of the time that happens, the movie suffers for it. If you look at the original uh, Judge Dredd, if you look at the only Hulk MCU movie, The Incredible Hulk, both those movies, among, like, a million others, those are movies where the people who starred in it kind of, like, screwed it up. Like, they said, I get your vision of the movie, and it's not my vision, I'm gonna do my vision. And it, it, the movie suffers, it ruins the movie for people, you know? And that's a big bummer. Don't mind my vaping. But in this case, Crocodile Dundee was a movie where Paul Hogan himself, he had a vision of this character of Crocodile Dundee. So it was almost more like a Rocky, you know, with like Sylvester Stallone. Where he had something, he had a story he wanted to tell, he had a character he wanted to play, that you like the music good. That he was not, it wasn't like, it was a fish out of water, but it was him actually being a fish out of water, you know what I mean? Like he was actually kind of representing himself to an extent. And it was cool, and it was awesome, and it was hilarious. And to this day, I still quote that movie, still love that movie. My family hates that movie, not because it's a bad movie, but because I ask for that movie so often. And if it's not that movie I ask for, it's, a, it's actually, I showed this exact VHS tape on the channel, I think two episodes ago. It is Short Circuit, and I have to say, close with it. I have to put them on the same level as Short Circuit 2. I got both of them right there. I'm trying to see if I'm lining it up. Also, there's some yellow. So, like, especially Short Circuit 2 kind of goes a bit invisible on there. Look at that. Invisible floating right through... Oh, I'm James's head. Anyway, Short Circuit, Short Circuit 2. You know what? Maybe I have kind of a fish out of water sort of vibe in my life, because I like both Short Circuit and Crocodile Dundee for the same reasons. You know, it's, it's taking somebody who's kind of out of their element... <clears throat> The world is thrust upon them, and it's their eccentricity that makes them actually stand out and become the kind of person that people accept. Like, at first, there's always that, 
that hesitance. There's that, you know, they don't want to accept this crazy person who's got a big knife or who has a boombox for a head, you know? They, they don't, they're not accepted right away. It's like a Pinocchio kind of thing. But after a while, after by the end of the movie or the end of the second movie, as in both cases, really, that that's when that main character, that fish out of water, finally finds their school. They find their people. They find, they find that they actually do belong. You know, like against all odds, you may think that they could never find a place in this world. Michael W. Smith reference. See who gets that one. But it's it's hard for them to find their place in this world, and they find it. Princess Bride yet. Not yet. No, that's that's another one. I don't have my VHS yet. I was doing like a VHS thing tonight, but I should probably get that. But honestly, that's another one kind of in that same vein. I am kind of drawn to that whole fish out of water, strange man, stranger in a strange land kind of a concept where it's somebody who doesn't belong, and yet in the end, you realize that everybody belongs. And I think that's a powerful, strong message that's close to my heart, close to my soul, close to who I am as a person, is I like that. Is I know I could be a strange person. I could be kind of a weird being, you know? But ultimately... I think that's what sets me apart, and as set apart as that makes me, it also makes me fit in that much more. You know, like that. I'm just, I'm happy about that. Happy to be a part of that. And maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm looking too far into it. But I think maybe the similarity, maybe that correlation does have a causality. You know, maybe there is a reason why I'm drawn to movies like that, and why I'm drawn to things like, like VHS tapes. The fact that it's something you can hold on to. Something that you could keep forever, something that's yours. Like, I like the idea of possessing something, not even mine, like in a selfish sense, but the fact that I could tangibly hold it in my hand. Like, if you have a DVD, or you have a stream movie, a, a, a thumbnail on your phone, those are all representations of, of objects. Those are all things that hint to a shadow of something that you could actually enjoy. And the fact that VHS, VHS tapes are something instead that... You can hold it in your hand like you're holding, not holding it in your hand, but it's like putting your hand on a grand piano, you know, or, or holding a guitar or holding a paintbrush or holding a hamburger that you bought yourself and it's all yours. Every single one of those is something that's yours. It's something you can hold. It's something you can enjoy, not at your own expense because someone else owns it, but you enjoy it because... You decided to, you know, I think that's an important lesson to learn there. And maybe that's one of the other reasons I'm getting kind of deep and philosophical about VHS tapes and movies in general. But hope you guys get what I'm saying. I'm probably going to end about right there. It's about 1720. Benny and June. You're a jerk, Brittany. I love that movie, too. You're naming all the good ones. Even, like, his little, like, dance with the sticks and the, the rolls and his hat thing. And I love that movie. Even what's his name? That guy who was from uh, that Sandra Bullock movie, per, uh, uh, Practical Magic, that dude. He's also in that movie. He plays as June's dad, I believe. Anyway, gosh dang it. I got so many movies I could talk about. You know what? This is going to turn into like an ongoing series, I think, of some movies that I love. And honestly, tell me what you guys think. If you like the idea of me not always just playing games, talking about games, doing gaming news, but branching out a bit, you know, doing more of like a cultural thing, doing more of an OM James kind of a thing, not just the games I like playing, the games I'm good at, but also... The things that make me who I am. If you guys are into that, yes, yes, okay. I will take it then. I will take it from you, Brittany. Um, again, anybody who's here, Kevin, Holly, uh, Brittany, it looks like there's one viewer that's logging right now. That's probably Brittany right now. But whoever might be, whoever here, whoever ends up watching this tomorrow, show us more about you. You got it. Right down to the hair coming down. Um, but anybody else who ends up watching this tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow, whatever it might be at midnight tonight, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy what I had to say. If you guys do like this format, I'm going to keep doing it because I enjoy it. And we'll see where it goes. And uh, ultimately, hope you guys have a great week. Tomorrow's uh, Friday for me. It's my payday. I'm going to hang out with a buddy of mine I haven't seen in far too long. We're going to catch up on stuff. He's been going through some stuff, and I'm looking forward to that. So a lot going on this weekend, hopefully. Aliyah and Autumn. Aliyah and Autumn. Awesome to see you. Hope you're awesome. Hope you guys are having a great night. You guys are awesome. I miss you, cutie beauties. I do. We're going to see you guys for uh, Piper's birthday, right? Yeah? Okay, we'll see you there. I love you guys a lot. I love you and miss you. Also, I don't think that Holly and Josh are watching anymore, but Josh, Holly, shout out to you. Kevin, Sierra, shout out to you. Anybody else who ends up watching this, shout out to Scaredy Matt. I miss that guy. I hope you guys have a great night, though. We're going to leave it right there. And as always, OMJamers, that's all y'all. Make somebody smile today, guys. Yeah. Outro.